All of the problems covered in my videos can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link, you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I've uploaded to YouTube. I've uploaded over a hundred extra videos on this website that you can't find on YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. All right, let's begin our problem. Let's have a look at problem 94A. This problem has us examining a bond issued at a premium. So on April 30th, 2017, Smokey Inc. issues a $100,000 10-year 7% bond. So this is the interest rate we're promising to pay 7%. The market rate is just 6%. So similar companies to Smokey are offering bonds uh, at a rate of 6%. We're offering 7%. Obviously, the market is going to like that. And they are going to pay a premium. And they do. They pay a 107.439. And that's 107.439% of the face value of what we were asking for. We were asking for a hundred get grand and we got paid 107.439. We got paid 107% of what we were asking for. And in fact, we can do our first journal entry now. Why don't we? We issued a bond and we got paid 107.439 but in like 10 years or 20 years, I forget how long this bond goes for, we're gonna only pay back $100,000. Well, what's the rest of it? The rest of it is our premium, 7439. This was issued on April 30th, 2017, April 30th, 2017. So we issue this bond and we say, look, we're getting 107 today, we're going to pay back 100. This premium, what it amounts to is an, a reduction of our interest, it's almost like interest revenue, right? I'm paying them every six months, I'm paying them an interest, interest cost, I'm paying them interest. But at the end of the bond, they, they're, they're paying me 107 now, and I only have to pay back 100. That extra seven grand is almost like interest in my pocket. So it reduces my interest expense over the life of a bond, as we're going to see. Uh, but to see that, we're going to have to prepare a bond amortization table. Now, I've got it here in Excel, and there should be a link in your problem telling, pointing you at this Excel file. Uh, we fill out the top and we say, okay, the interest payment is blank percent of maturity value. It's whatever we've promised to pay. We've promised 7%, and whatever we've promised to pay actually divided by two because this is semi annual. We pay every six months. The interest expense is the market rate of interest, and again, divided by two. So that was 6% divided by two, 3%. It's not a discount, so I'll delete discount. It's not a discount, so I'll just delete the word discount. And it's not a discount, so I'm going to delete the cell related to discounts. It's a premium, and the blank plus D is the bond uh the future value of the bond, the the um, amount we got to pay back at the end of the bond, the face value, I guess is the word I was looking for. And the face value of our bond is a hundred grand. Okay, so the interest period, the first relevant period here is the, the issuance of the bond, April 30th. So let's fill that in. April 30th, 2017. Uh, do we make a payment today? Nope. Do we have interest expense day? No, we just issued the bond. Do we have any amortization on our premium? No. So these first three cells shall not be filled in. However, we do have a premium account balance. What's our premium account balance? Well, let's look at our journal entry. It's the amount we got paid above the face value of the bond. It's 7439. Uh, and what's our bond carrying amount? $100,000 uh, plus D. It's 107439. It's really the amount we got paid for our bond. Let me just... I know it's going to do some rounding things, so let me head it off at the pass. I want everything rounded to the nearest dollar here. Uh, so that was April 30th. That was our issuance of the bond. Now here's where things get interesting. Uh, October 31st, we make our first interest payment. Okay, so that's the next relevant date. It's six months later. How much is our interest payment? It's three and a half percent of the maturity value of the bond. So I go equals 0 0.035, that's three and a half percent, times the maturity value. Well, that's times a hundred thousand dollars. 
So it's 3,500 bucks. The interest expense, 3% times the bond carrying amount. Bond carrying amount, 107,439. Just wanna double check one thing really quickly here. Uh, yep, that was where it should be. Uh, okay, the premium amortization, A minus B, I take A, 3,500 minus B, 3,223, and I get 277. I'm not sure, I, I tried to head off this rounding thing at the past, but I, apparently I didn't. There we go, now it's gonna round properly. Premium account balance, D minus C, 7439 minus 277, 7162. And the bond carrying amount, $100,000 plus the... The most common mistake on these tables is people go 107 plus 7, they get 114. No, no, this number always needs to be getting closer to the face value of our bond. So in this case, with the premium, it's going to be falling. It's going to be getting closer to 100 grand. If you find it's getting bigger, you're screwing something up. The next relevant date, April 30th, 2018. The interest payment is again 3,500 bucks. The interest expense, 3% times the preceding bond carrying amount. The preceding bond carrying amount was 107,162. The premium amortization, A minus B. If we get a negative number here, we've messed something up again. I don't know what's going on with the, my decimals. I, I really thought I had told it not to do any. Um, in any event, D minus C, 7162 minus 285 and 100,000 plus D. Now we could continue this until the end of time, uh, but it's a pretty easy fill in here uh, and just to get Excel to fill it down. Uh, let's see. Let's have Excel fill this down and see how far we go. Oops, I forgot to fill the months. I'll do that in a moment. Whoa, it's a long bond. There we go. So you can see we hit 100,000 exactly, and I'm guessing that's going to be uh, 20 periods from now, 10 years from now. Yeah, we do. Uh, let's see if this fills properly. I always find dates don't fill very well, but maybe it did. Yeah, April 30th, 2027 is the date we have this bond that we have to pay it back. But, you know, if you're being asked to prepare one of these by hand, you'll just be asked for the first three or four interest periods, and, and there we've done it on screen. Okay. So we've prepared our effective interest table, but we still have journal entries yet to do. So that was April 30th entry. I'm just going to give myself a little more space to work with here. Let's do the October 31st entry. So on October 31st, I look at my table and I say, okay, it's the, the second line down. I make a payment, $3,500. So let's credit cash, $3,500. Um, what else might be happening? Well, I have an interest expense. So we debit interest expense. How much is our interest expense? It is $3,223. The difference goes to the premium and it's premium amortization. Now, premium is a credit to make the premium go to zero. We are going to debit our premium. And if you think about what's happening here, debit our premium by the amount of the amortization on October 31st, it's 277. If you think about what's happening, the premium is reducing our interest expense. Why is it reducing our interest expense? Well. We, we got a premium, it means we got too much cash to begin with. We got more cash than we were asking for. So when we make interest payments, our, our interest expense is reduced by the amount of that premium. Uh, okay, let's continue and do the December 31st, the fiscal year end entry. So October, so November, December, it's two months. Every line on this thing is, is six months. So we're interested in just two out of the six months that are contained on this line that I've highlighted. 
So this line, the April 30th line, contains data from November, December, January, February, March, April, six months. We're interested in November and December, two months. So I'm going to take all the information from this line and multiply by 2 six. So 32, 15 times 2 sixths is our starting point. So 32, 15 times 2 divided by 6. And it's 107.2. 1072. So I'm going to debit interest expense for 1072. I also will have to debit my premium for the premium amortization, but again times 26. The premium amortization is 285. So I take 285 times 2 divided by 6 and I get 95. Okay, so for $95, I debit my premium. I credit not cash as I did above, but interest payable because I don't make any payments on this date. I can either add these two together, 1072 plus 95, which would be 1167, I think, but let's make sure. I think it's 1167, but let's do the math. It's our interest payment, $3,500 times two sixths. Because I'm not actually making the payment, it's two months though worth of payment that's accruing. 1167, absolutely right. Okay, good. Uh, so we've got one more entry to do. That was December 31st. We've got to do the April 30th entry. And on April 30th, we do make a payment. We credit cash for the full 3,500 bucks to say I'm making a 30, <laughs> my writing is so bad. I'm making a $3,500 payment. We debit, actually let's debit interest payable. Get that out of the way. Any interest that we've said is payable, well, we're paying 1167 and then some. Let's get rid of that. And then we know we're going to debit interest expense and debit our premium for not two sixths of that line that we'd highlighted, but four sixths. This was all two months. So two sixths. This one is four months. So. Four six. Why four months? Well, December to April, uh, January, February, March, April. So we're going to take four sixths of our interest expense and four sixths of our premium. Our interest expense thirty two fifteen. Oh, I didn't mean to minimize that. Thirty two fifteen times four divided by six. This is our interest expense twenty one forty three. Our premium, 285 times 4 sixths. And 190. So 2143 plus 190 plus 1167 totals to 3500. That is our credit. So our, our journal entry balances, we have done the job here. All right, that's it for this question on a bond issued at a premium. Stay tuned for our next video.